Hey guys, welcome back to the Anime Collector. Today for my collection, we're going to be taking a look at Mad Bull 34. And because this is our first review, we sort of have this opportunity to establish the template. You know, the direction you can kind of expect all future reviews to sort of go in. So, uh, the first thing I want to talk about is my personal history with the show. And, um, you know, uh, I've actually been wanting to see the show for a long time. And, and I, I suppose... I'm a little bit predisposed to loving this show based on the fact that I've always really liked cop shows and, and cop movies and in fact I've been developing my own detective series since 2008 called Dino Cops and um, you know I first found out about the show on anime, uh, AnimePlanet.com when I was inputting the episodes I'd seen from another cop show called You're Under Arrest. Um, I, I clicked on the police tag because I was really interested in seeing what other sort of cop genre animes existed and, and I found this show and uh, you know Dino Cops is like a it's like a throwback to old action movies of the 80s and 90s and my god when I saw the promotional artwork for this thing I was hooked I'm like I got to see that show but something uh, you guys should know about me is that I sort of live by some rules when it comes to collecting and um, sort of rules I developed to help keep my anime addiction uh, under control and uh, one of the most important rules I have is that I exclusively watch shows that I own and I was really bummed when I first uh, when I first found out about this show because I, I looked it up on Anime News Network and I was like, oh my gosh, it's been licensed, but it's only ever been released on VHS. So uh, I was really bummed. Now, obviously, I've got it on DVD. You know, it actually came out last year. So um, I bought it at Anime Expo 2013 um, at the Discotech Media booth, along with some other shows like uh, Loop on the Third Season One and. Fist of the North Star uh, and the Fist of the North Star movie, some great, great old classics, and uh, you know I was really excited to watch it. Um, now, as far as the DVD goes, this is the complete collection, uh, and uh, something that they sort of risked with with doing it this way, and instead of doing four separate DVDs, I mean, obviously it's more convenient to have everything on one disc, but but the thing is that. With the original VHS, they had four installments. So, so the the DVD has the original like promotional artwork from uh, the first OVA, which is a good choice for for the DVD that contains all the episodes. But um, with the VHS tapes, they were able to get uh, the promotional artwork for each episode out, um, and so it was really cool. But one thing that Discotech Media did really nicely, I really love that they did this, is on the back of the DVD, above the titles of the um, of the episodes. They've actually got the original poster, like, promotional artwork for it. So that's pretty cool that they managed to keep it in there. Now, I also want to take this opportunity to mention that the first episode of this anime is titled Hit and Rape. And I'm like, yeah, okay, now, I don't usually buy shows just so I can say that I own something that's, you know, got an episode titled Hit and Rape. But uh, a great deal of the stuff I do own, when I talk about it, that's kind of what I say. It's like, um, people say, hey, is Mad Bull 34 any good? I'll be like... Well, I just want to mention that the first episode is titled Hit and Rape, you know. But uh, believe it or not, the original titles, the ones used um, by Manga Entertainment's release, I believe, uh, the only one that was actually the same was Manhattan Connection. And the way that I kind of see it uh, is that probably, you know, with Discotech Media, they've got sort of a shield in that they released it as one volume. So they sort of promote this show as Mad Bull 34, The Complete Collection. Whereas in 1996, when the VHSs came out, Manga Entertainment would have had to make the decision whether or not they wanted to release it as Mad Bull 34, Hit and Rape. And I think that's probably why they changed the names. But, um, you know, I I'm pretty sure that uh, Discotech Media went with the original episode titles. Because uh, when I was doing a little bit of research for this show, uh, I came across, like, a, a manga scan of one of the title um, pages for, like, the chapter of the manga. Uh, and it was titled Hit and Rape. So, so I can assume that that's what the uh, original episodes were sort of titled. Um, now, as far as the DVD goes, there's not a lot of uh, special features on it. Uh, in fact, I don't think there's any, believe it or not. But um, it has English and Japanese audio. Uh, it's got the original manga entertainment dub, which is awesome. You know, I, I don't want to rate... Uh, the dubs on like a scale of 1 to 10 or anything because, you know, there's a lot that goes into a dub. Um, and uh, personally, I, I have an invested interest in, in dubbing because I, I really um, I really enjoy the, the sort of whole process that goes into um, taking something that was developed for Japan and sort of sort of bringing it into the uh, American sort of audience. So, uh, you know, a lot of stuff goes into it. Like um, when they when they translate it, they don't just translate the show. There's a lot of Japanese idioms that don't translate well in, in anime. And they have to sort of figure out ways to make the, to convey the same emotion 
through what an English person would have said. And, and, and then, of course, you know, a lot of times you'll, you'll rate something based on how many voice actors are in it that you already really like. So I don't really want to be rating things like on a scale of 1 to 10, but, um, and also mainly because, you know, usually, usually uh, with dubs, they, they're usually on a middle ground. Like, uh, they're not any better or any worse than most other shows. And then there's a couple times where, where something comes out and you're like, wow, they really went above and beyond. Like something that's just, it's just noticeably better in this particular show. Or, wow, it's really subpar in this particular show. And the, the final reason why I don't want to be rating dubs is because usually the worse the dub is, the more I want to hear it. I don't know. It's just something about the way that I watch anime where I really enjoy that stuff. Now, um, as far as the dub goes, uh, from what I've read, it, it was recorded in London, um, and I guess it used a bunch of British actors. So, um, in order to hide their British accents, uh, all the characters have like these really thick New York accents, and it just it cracks me up so much because because um, it really enriches the experience, you know. Um, now. I also kind of want to talk about the the music. So um, some animes I own because of the soundtrack. You know, I own King Gainer because of that opening theme. You know, there's just some shows that I pick up because of that reason. Um, and uh, in this particular show, it doesn't have the same sort of format. Being that it's four OVAs, it doesn't really have the same sort of format as another show where it's got like a, a constant recurring opening theme and an ending theme and all that. It's just kind of like, uh, you know, music in, in motion pictures, it does its job when you don't really even notice that it's there. Um, when it's setting the mood and, and immersing you in, um, in what you're watching, but you don't necessarily notice it. Now, sometimes anime... Um, music, like, is so well put together, and it's just so good, that it's what you notice about the show. Like, instead of, instead of completely immersing you in the picture, uh, you end up almost being taken out of the, out of the, the visuals because of how good the audio is. You're like, you're like, um, I don't know, you just, you really draw attention to it sometimes. Um, and in this case, I, I would say that it does its job. You know, it's sort of a mediocre soundtrack, but what's great about it is that it fits the fact that this show takes place in New York. It fits the sort of era um, and the feel of the show, which is something I really like about it. Now, something I want to try to do in, in my reviews is, uh, where necessary, where appropriate, I want to try to explain why the, why the show is titled what it's titled. So in this, in, in this case, why is it called Mad Bull 34? Well, it's actually pretty simple. See, it takes place in the 34th precinct in New York. And, and um, on a side note, something that's pretty cool that they do at the end of every episode is they actually give a special thanks to the, uh, to the men and women of the 34th, which is pretty nice to see. Um, and then uh, the reason it's called Mad Bull um, is that uh, it follows the partnership of two police officers, Dizaburo Edibon and John Estes. Now, John Estes has two nicknames in the show. Uh, he's known about the through the 34th Precinct as uh, the Mad Bull because he's built like an ox and he, he's just like notoriously violent. And I think they even like kind of refer to him like he's, he's a bit of a psychopath in the way that he takes on crime. Um, and so there you get the title, Mad Bull in the 34th Precinct, Mad Bull 34. Um, now, he has another nickname, and it's a nickname that he, he's, the, the people who are a little bit closer to him in the show uh, kind of refer to him by this other nickname. So uh, his other nickname is Sleepy, and um, uh, it turns out, I looked this up, and it actually turns out that uh, the original um, author of the manga, you know, the original creator, is, is a bit of a music buff, and uh, he actually named um, Daisaburo Edibon after the Japanese guitarist from a band called The Golden Cups. Uh, the Japanese guitarist's name is Edibon, and uh, I actually feel like um, in some of the photographs I've seen of Edibon, um, he kind of looks like Dizabur. I think that maybe the character design was based on, on how he looked in the 1960s or whenever. Uh, it's kind of one of those older bands. And, and I've actually heard some of the music. It's really good. I, I recommend it if you, if you guys can kind of check it out. Now, um, John Estes is actually named after a blues guitarist named Sleepy John Estes. And I think it's safe to say that his character design was not based on, uh, on Sleepy John Estes. But, um, you know, normally in anime, uh, or in, in, in anything really, uh, when a character does something a lot, or at least when it, when it appears that they seem to do something a lot, they, they develop a nickname based on, on that sort of thing. Kind of like with uh, Snow White and the Seven Doors, where they're sort of named after, you know, their personality traits and whatnot. And with Sleepy, um, they kind of go out of their way in, in the anime. And I, this really tickled me. I thought this was kind of funny, um, the way that they did this. Because in the first episode, when Dizaboro first meets um, John Estes, he's uh, he's sleeping. And he, he, he has this line, you know, that totally... Um, um, a stereotypical almost sort of cop line where he's like, 
man, I hope I don't end up like that guy someday. And then he, uh, Sleepy wakes up and he's like, hey, man, I'm your new partner kind of kind of thing. Uh, and they really establish it in a way where you sort of look at it as, okay, he's called Sleepy because he sleeps a lot. Um, but it's kind of funny because he he literally sleeps one time in the entire show. Um, and granted, I haven't read the manga. I, I have a similar rule with manga where um, I exclusively read the stuff that I own. So um, I, I don't know... Um, that he sleeps more in the manga, but I, I sort of assume that he does. Um, but uh, when I was watching the show, and I was, you know, giving him the nickname in my head that I referred to him by when I was thinking about the show, um, I found myself um, thinking that maybe Sleepy was um, a reference to a different activity, because the name I actually came up for him was Humpy, because he bangs like so many chicks over the course of just four episodes that it's it's actually pretty impressive. Um, and it's just kind of interesting to me, you know, that they that they actually ended up only having him sleep once in the whole show. Um, anyway, as far as the plot goes, you know, each episode has its own uh, has its own plot. So um, you know, there's there's hit and rape, um, which is actually about. Uh, uh, yeah, I actually don't want to give too much away, but but there's like uh, a hitman that comes after them at one point, and there's just there's just a lot of um, really crazy stuff that happens in every episode. I really I really can't even describe it to be honest with you. Uh, it's a little bit difficult to talk about the 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 um, the plot of this show because it has so many different elements to it, and it's not like uh, most shows where where each episode is sort of going towards one direction, like they're not like searching for Naraku the whole show kind of thing. Um, now, uh, but I do want to I do want to give you guys my memorable moment. Um, when I when I can't give you a really good plot summary, um, I would love to give you guys my memorable moments. And it's not going to be as easy for other shows as it is with this show because when I think about Mad Bull Thirty Four, a couple things really stick out in my mind. Uh, for instance, in the first episode, uh, something that they do uh, more often than seems necessary is that the two the two police officers end up dressing up in women's clothing in order to sort of sneak in places like uh, at one point they have to um um they sneak into an all girls shooting range and it's just it's so funny to see John Estes in, in this dress cuz he's so clearly a guy in drag um and I don't know it's just it's really funny to me um how they decided to set it up and how they executed the whole thing uh, and and it, it truly is just a very humorous um, thing every time they're on screen. And it's like, it, it actually feels like they stay um, in their their dresses for far longer than is necessary, too, which is pretty funny. Um, now, my favorite bit, the thing that sticks out in my mind the most in the show is in the second episode, where they're actually being fired upon by the Mafia. And uh, John Estes says something like... Um, uh, well, it's a good thing I decided to wear these grenades as a jock strap, and it's just like the visual picture they give is just it's it's burned in my mind for eternity. How crazy and weird! I just couldn't believe I just saw what I saw, you know. Um, and then one of my favorite bits, uh, I think it's in the third episode. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's in the third episode where um, they're being attacked by these assassins, uh, these Chinese assassins, and oh my goodness. Um, I don't want to say that they're the most racist voices I've ever heard, but they are very stereotypical. And, and for me, I don't know, I'm, I'm a big fan of, uh, of old movies, and especially the old cop movies and the black exploitation films and stuff. And it's really funny to me to hear um, these voices being used. And I, I, I personally feel like it really enriches the experience of, of the show because it, it really makes it feel like these old movies. Um, and uh, gosh, these guys have the great accents. But... Um, uh, they, this group of Chinese assassins is going after them, and uh, they keep killing off the men and women of the of this assassin group. So, like, the leader ends up going after them, and he actually comes after them in, an, in an, like, an army tank, and he's got, like, a rocket launcher and stuff. And at one point, John Essies is like, um, okay, you guys go that way, I'll go this way, and, and we'll catch them off guard so we can, we can take them out. So he runs up to the tank, and I just love it in animes when a character is this buff. He grabs the tank, and he actually, like, flips it over. It's hilarious. Um... And then uh, something else you guys should probably know about me. Um, I actually have a degree in animation. Um, I'm a certified professional in Autodesk Maya, and uh, my eyes are sort of trained in ways that maybe you yours aren't. Uh, and I want to kind of, um, whenever I notice it and I, I feel like it's worth bringing up, I want to talk about some humorous hiccups in, like, the animation. Um, so uh, at one point, it's in uh, the beginning of Episode 3, which is Charging Jackie. Um, basically, this woman, Jackie, she's like a... Um, 
like a reporter, and she's reporting on, on the crime of this one guy, and he's really wealthy, and he's sending people to kill her, to silence her and stuff. And uh, at one point, Dizaboro sees that she is um, about to get in her car, and I forget exactly what they show, but it's clear that the car is about to explode. So Dizaboro actually jumps, not, not over the hood of the car, but like over the top of it, uh, and he like, he takes her to the ground, and then the car blows up, and he protected her and stuff, and um, she's like, oh man, Dizaboro, are you okay? And then uh, another woman, uh, uh, either, I think she's a detective, she might just be an officer though, uh, named uh, Perrine. Uh, she comes up, she's like, yeah, get out of here, Jackie. He's like, guys, bro, are you all right? And at one point in, in that, if you watch it frame by frame, Perrine actually disappears from the animation and then comes back. So it's, it's just kind of a fun, interesting thing. You know, it's like, it, it's actually, um, ironically for me, it, it doesn't even ruin the experience for me. It actually makes it a little bit more fun for me when I get to, when I get to, you know, use my analytical eye, my animator's eye to see that kind of stuff. So that was something I really enjoyed. Um, now, I really recommend you guys pick up the show. It's uh, If you're into, you know, cop shows, old action movies like I am, you'll really, really enjoy it. Uh, but I should mention it's definitely not for kids. Um, basically, every single character that they come up against, that they fight, gets decapitated. I mean, whether it's through a couple bullets to the neck, um, the take off the head, or a shotgun blast to the face, or literally holding a person's face into a subway, an oncoming subway car. I mean, literally every single character that they come up against seems like they get their head taken off one way or the other. So it's extremely violent. It's very, very sexual. There's a lot of nudity, lots of prostitutes, really crazy stuff going on. Um, and then the, the at least the English dub, and I, I'm going to assume the Japanese version is not much better. Um, there's a lot of profanity in it. But uh, but if you're if you're you know into this sort of thing, uh, really worth picking it up. Um, if you'd like to support the industry, you guys can head over to discotechmedia.com, pick this thing up for like seventeen dollars or so. Um, really, really good show, and uh, while you're there, you really got to check out the other stuff that Discotech Media has been putting out. I mean, like I said before, it's like I, I picked up Loop on the Third, uh, Season One, uh, Fist of the North Star. They've got some great stuff. I got uh, Kyoto Ninden Teyande, the Japanese version of Samurai Pizza Cats. They've also got the American version of Samurai Pizza Cats. Um, they've got Captain Harlock. They just got. Um, first season of Monster Rancher, all sorts of great shows coming out. Uh, so definitely check that out. Now, if you'd like to support me, you can do so by leaving a like, sharing this with your friends, you know, subscribing. And if there's a show you'd like to know about, you know, something that maybe you, you've you been wanting to see for a while, but you've never really gotten around to it, and you kind of want to get that nudge on whether or not you really should go for it or you shouldn't, um, leave it in the comment. Let me know what kind of shows you guys would like to see me review. Um, now, let's take this DVD and pop it in the bookshelf. Uh, and, uh, you know, if you guys want to check out last week's episode, it was the, you know, it's really just the channel trailer, but it's there if you guys want to see it. Um, anyway, I'll see you guys next week. Actually, I'll see you guys later this week for the first tips from the Anime Collector segment. So, anyway, take it easy, guys. Happy New Year. Have a great one.